How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be working on an Arians 30 inch snowblower and I'm just going to be taking you through the process of how to lubricate the underside of it. Now this Arians that I'm working on, it did have quite a few problems when it was brought to me. You should remember this machine from the how to fix surging on a Nikki carburetor. If you guys haven't seen that video, you can click in the link right here and I'll also have the link in the description down below. But basically I did a bunch of videos on this and I'm just splitting them up now. So let's get right into it. So because I have the oil and gas drained from this machine, I flipped it up and I noticed that the freewheel engage over here is seized in the freewheel position. So this tire just spins freely because that little dog that engages the axle is seized. So I'm gonna try to pry it out, rotate the wheel to the point where it's at its deepest spot and then I might go in there with some grease and try to pop that over and then probably lubricate the cable that goes up. I'm just inspecting the bottom end and then I'll check to see the tension on the friction wheel side. I've pulled off the wheels to lubricate them quickly. So if my customer ever has a flat tire, he'll just be able to slide them off and he won't have to worry about the metal rim seizing to the axle and then that would cause a big issue because then you got to go in with a torch or you know it's just a pain in the butt so just a little bit of maintenance that's all so there we go a little bit of grease goes a long way now when we roll this one it drives on both wheels and when we roll this one over here it rolls on that side as well so a little bit of grease goes a long way and if you can get your hands on it i would recommend using a quick dry black graphite lubricant so you can go in there and spray the dogs as they call it and basically that'll just prevent it from dripping down onto your friction wheel disc and prevent your friction wheel from slipping. And the next thing I'm going to do is take some low temperature grease and lubricate the axle that the friction wheel slides on. So we have to remember how a snowblower works is that this is always spinning. So this right here has a belt and that goes up to your engine. So this disc is always spinning. This runs on a plate and we have a cable going here. So when you engage your drive lever up top, it pulls this plate up, which then engages your friction wheel. And that transfers the rotational motion from this pulley to your friction wheel up here. And then that transfers the drive to your drive axle, which is over here through these gears. So to quickly explain how you shift gears and how you go forward and reverse, it's quite simple. This disc right here is spinning with your engine all the time. So depending on the location of your friction wheel, whether it's to the left or right side, will differentiate between forward and reverse rotation because we have to remember that this is spinning in one direction. So if you're on this side, your wheels are gonna turn one way and if you're on this side, your wheels are gonna turn the other way. Also, the center of a circle rotates slower than the outside of a circle, so it's just like a vehicle. If you're taking a corner, your outside wheel is going to spin faster than your inside wheel. And that's why cars have differentials. So if your friction wheel was right here, your machine is going to run slowly. And if your friction wheel was all the way over here, your machine is going to go quickly. So your friction wheel just slides on that axle right there. And that's how a friction wheel drive system works. It's pretty simple. And then they have this spring here to engage this dog so that you can free wheel so that it makes turning your machine easier. But this is the way that Arians does it. So so this particular setup might not be the same as yours, but in relation to how the friction wheel drive system works, they're pretty much all the same on every snowblower that's ever been made, as long as it has a friction wheel drive setup. But like I said, you just do a little bit of maintenance. We're going to grease that shaft at the back. We're going to shift our gears from forward to reverse, and you want to be using a low temp grease. So I have here some Mystic number no. two, and this is a low temperature extreme grease, excellent cold weather pumpability and performance. So basically what that means is that it's just super soft and when it gets cold, it doesn't harden up. If you use grease from your grease gun and it's not specified as a low temp grease, what'll happen is in colder weather, it'll really thicken up and you're gonna have a hard time shifting your gears or moving this friction wheel on that axle there. So right up here, we have our shift lever. This is reverse right here. And then if we go up here, that's going to be our high speed or like let's say a number six speed on a Craftsman. So if you ever find that you're having a difficult time shifting your gears, all you have to do is lubricate this shaft here and it will make shifting your gears much easier. Now comes time to clean off the friction wheel because any oil and grease will transfer over to your rubber friction disc and will cause a slipping issue when you're driving it. So we're gonna be using some refinishers select here, silicone, wax, and grease remover. You can use any kind of grease remover. You can even use a little bit of brake cleaner on a rag 
and you just want to go in there, clean off all the oil, and make sure there is no grease or anything on there. Now, if your machine's a lot older than this model here, because this one's not that old, and let's say you've done a friction wheel replacement already, and you find that there's quite a bit of rubber built up onto your friction disc there, what you can do is use a little scotch pad here and go in there and rough up the surface. So you're just gonna go in there and clean it up and get all the rubber and any chunks of anything that's on there. You guys can see it's already cleaning it up a little bit. And you're just gonna go and clean it up a bit and then go and use your oil and grease remover and it should be ready to go. So if you find yourself having a hard time getting at the back of that disc to clean it, all you have to do is come up to your pull start and with your engine throttle down, just go ahead and give your pull start a little rotation and that will allow you to access the whole disc and not just one little bit of it. So now comes the time we're gonna clean the disc. So I have a clean shop towel here with some oil and grease remover on it and I'm just gonna go in and we're just gonna wipe that all down. And again, we can go up top and rotate our pull start, but it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is wipe it down, you're gonna see all the stuff come off of it. So you might have thought it was clean, but now it's getting real clean. And now that our disc is clean, we're just gonna go ahead and inspect our friction wheel. I've already had a look at it, and while it may look like it's pretty much brand new condition, if you give the axle a slight rotation here, we're gonna notice that in one of the spots here, it is starting to crack ever so slightly. So this snowblower will most likely run and drive perfectly fine on that friction wheel for maybe another season, but I guarantee that sooner or later it will have to be changed because over time that rubber's gonna dry out and that crack's gonna get even worse. So I just have a little better lighting in here so you guys can see it is definitely cracked. And that's what happens guys, these little rubber discs, they do crack and they need to be replaced. So I'm ready to put my access panel back on, but before I do, I'm gonna be using some Permatex nickel anti-seize on the bolts for this access panel. And that will just ensure that they don't seize because the bottom side of this snowblower is always super wet and water will make things corrode and rust over time. So to prevent that, we're just gonna use a little bit of nickel anti-seize. So the access panel on the bottom of this machine is reinstalled with all of the six bolts. So I'm gonna flip this back down. But before I do, a good thing to note is if your machine has a cable drive system with these little plastic pulley wheels and your cable rides on that, it's always a good idea to go ahead and take some white lithium grease and go in there and liberally spray that whole pulley down and make sure it turns. Just make sure you don't spray it into the hole or get it onto your friction wheel. So we have our pulley here. We can see that rotates nicely now. If we come over here to our shift lever, we can see that that rotates. So basically you're just gonna hit all of the rotational parts and this thing's good to go. So now I'm ready to drop this machine down. I'll reinstall the carburetor and I'll get the fuel tank and the plastic shrouding reinstalled as well. Well, that's it for today's video. Basically the process of lubricating the underside of a snowblower is uh, fairly straightforward. You just gotta know what to do and what not to do. Now, the one thing that I didn't touch on was the gears or the chain. If it's uh, real dry and starting to rust and corrode, you most definitely wanna put some kind of lubrication on there. I would recommend a dry graphite lubricant because that stuff, even though it will drip when you initially spray it, it will dry out and that will just prevent it from getting on your friction wheel or the friction disc. Now, as for the gears, you don't really wanna use a grease. Again, I would recommend the dry graphite spray. You don't necessarily have to lubricate them that much, unless it's an MTD design where they use the roller bearings. And if you wanna check out a more in-depth video that I did on that specific type of machine, you can click in the top right of your screen right now. And that will link to a video that MTD snowblower that wouldn't move forward or back when you pushed it. And it was just a case of the roller bearings inside of those gears seizing up. But anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to come on back next week. Check the channel out for new content. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.